Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to talk about looping with while, break, and continue. Now, as we talked in the last tutorial about for and how we can loop with for, we can also loop with while. So let's take our example we had last time. For as long as hamburger is available, we will continue eating. Or, while there is more hamburger to eat, we will continue to eating in this situation. Well, continue is going to step in there in the situation in which you say, well, maybe I don't want to loop and eat another piece of hamburger. I'd rather have a drink or a fry. And break is going to step in and say, I've had enough hamburger. Even though it is not done or I'm not finished eating it, I'm going to stop eating hamburger. So let me give you some examples to help all that make more sense. All right, so what we want to do here is I want to generate a random number using a new module called random. So let's go and get that. And I'm specifically going to use a function called random range. And then what we will do is use the while loop to guess the random value and then output it. So what we want to do first is generate a random integer between 1 and 50. So I'm going to say random number is equal to use the random module that we have right up here and then we're going to say rand range and we want 1 through 50 so we're going to say 1 through 51 then it's very important whenever you are using a while loop that the value that you are going to be incrementing each time you go through the while loop is defined outside of the while loop the while loop is going to have the form of while followed by a condition. So I'm going to say while i is not equal to the random number that was generated, I'm going to continue looping. And all I'll do here is say i plus equal to 1 and increment i. And this thing right here, this statement, is equivalent to saying i is equal to i plus 1. It's just a shortened version of it. And then I know that once I get outside of our while loop, pay reference to the fact I have a colon here, and this is indented to show all the code that's contained in the while loop. Well, I know if I go through that whole while loop, I can then say the random value is, and then put random number. And we can go through, run it, and you're going to see the random value is 36. And once again, the random value is 4, and the random value is 42. All right, so cool stuff. Now what I want to do is talk about how we can use break and continue. Now break and continue are going to be very useful. Continue is going to stop executing the code that remains in a loop, and then jump back to the top of the loop and continue looping. Break, on the other hand, is going to end execution prematurely, and jump directly to the code that lies immediately outside of the loop. So what I want to do here is I want to cycle from 0 through 20 with a while loop. And if a number is even, I will use continue to skip printing it. If, however, it is odd, I will print it. And then we will end execution prematurely with break if the value ever reaches a value of 15. So once again, I'm going to create my starting value outside of the while loop. I'm going to say while i is less than or equal to 20. I'm going to continue looping unless break or continue steps in there and does something. I'm then going to check for whether I have a even value or not using modulus as I've covered in previous parts of the tutorial. So I'm going to say if i modulus 2 is equal to 0. Well in that situation I know I have an even value. So I'm going to increment the value of i. And then I'm going to say continue, meaning that I want to skip printing anything out, and I want to jump back up to the top of the while loop. Otherwise, I'm going to say if i is equal to 15, I'm going to break completely out of looping altogether. Then, after I have all that, I can say print odd and the value. And then don't forget to increment the value of i. And if we run it, you can see that it prints out all of the odd values. And that's a rundown of how we can use while, continue, and break.
And now I'm going to hit you with probably the hardest problem you're going to have. Definitely, you haven't had a problem this hard before. And this is going to be an extremely hard problem. I'm giving you this just to really push your brain to see if you can solve it. If you can, that's fantastic. If you cannot, no problem. So what I want you to do for this problem is I want you to draw a pine tree after asking the user for the number of rows on the pine tree. And like I said, this is one of the most difficult problems. Feel free to use all the code in the past, but if you don't get it, don't worry about it. Don't be beaten up. Just trying to stretch your brain. And here is going to be sample output. So you are going to ask the user how tall is the tree, and then they are going to provide a value, and you are going to go and create all of these hash symbols right here. Now you should go and recreate this whole entire tree inside of your text file, and then count out these values here because you're going to see a pattern. And you can either give that a go right now on your own, or I'm going to provide you with a couple tips that might help you out. So either pause your screen now or wait and get a couple tips. Okay, so the first couple tips here. Tip one, you should use a while loop and three for loops to solve this problem. Tip number two, know that if you are going to be printing five rows, that these are going to be the number of spaces before the first hash and then the number of hashes that follow afterwards. Also know that the spaces before the stump is going to also be equal to the spaces before the top of your tree. And then finally tip three, you're going to need to do all of the following in your program. Decrement spaces by one each time through the loop. Increment the hashes by two each time through the loop. Save spaces to the stump by calculating the tree height minus one. Decrement from tree height until it equals zero. Print spaces and then hashes for each row. And then finally print the stump spaces and then one hash. All right, so hopefully those tips help you out. And now I'm gonna show you the final solution. All right, so what I wanna do first here is get the tree height. And I'll get that by asking the user how high they want it to be. So I'm going to say, how tall is the tree? Then after I do that, I'm going to convert it into an integer. So I'm going to say tree height is equal to int tree height. I'm going to get the starting spaces for the top of the tree, which is going to be tree height minus one. I then know that there is one hash to start with that is going to be incremented each time. So this is going to represent the number of hashes on each line. I also want to go and save the number of stump spaces till later. So we'll go tree height minus one. And then I'm gonna say, wow, tree height is not equal to zero. And then I'm going to print out some information. So I'm gonna say four, I in range, so as long as I have spaces, and I'm going to print those spaces now and put a space inside of there. Now if you do not want a new line automatically triggered with print, you go end is equal to and quotes like that and it will not print out a new line. Then after that I'm going to say for I in range, and here this is going to represent the number of hashes. And I will print out those hashes. There is the hash, and equal to, and there that is. Now I want to issue a new line because I have one line of the tree already created. And I know from my research that spaces is decremented by one each time. So I'm going to say spaces minus equal to one. Also, I know from my research that hashes are incremented by two each time. And, of course, as I do each layer of our tree, I know that I need to decrement it as well. Then I just need to print the spaces before the stump and then a final hash. So I'll say for i in range stump spaces and again I'm going to print out a space here and 
end equal to, so we don't have any new lines. And then to finish it off, I will print out the, whoops, outside of the for loop. And then to finish it off, I will print the final hash for our stump. And save that. Boom, ba boom. There we go. How tall is the tree? Five. And it messed up. What did I do wrong? Oh, I see what I did. This for loop needs to be outside of the while loop. Okay, so it's so easy to go and make little errors like that. But I got everything all set now. And let's run it again. How tall is the tree? Five. And there you can see it worked. All right, so that's it for today's lesson. Good job if you solved the Christmas tree problem, and if you didn't, don't worry about it. Remember, the goal is only to get you to think in new ways and to understand the solution, which is finally printed out here. And in the next video, I'm going to cover exception handling and how to work with accurate floats. Don't forget to solve the quiz problems, and like always, please leave your questions and comments below.